Why is that minor? <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Chris O'Hara back for another guitar tutorial. And today we have a fun one. It's the we're gonna be covering the modes. And this is a definitely a difficult topic to talk about because it, it can be um, hard to grasp. So if you're new to music theory, I'd recommend you check out my beginning kind of guitar beginning guide to music theory, and hopefully something will pop up around here so you can see that and then come check this video out that first video will give you a good kind of foundation and this video kind of builds upon that um, that first video so check that one out today we're gonna I'm really gonna start from scratch with the modes and we're gonna build them up and we're gonna take a look at all the different modes and I'm gonna give you some kind of practical ways that you can practice these and how they how they would be applied. This is just a small, even though this lesson is I think almost an hour, um, this is still kind of a small kind of window to how this stuff can be used. So um, have some patience with it and hopefully this will get you started and uh, get you understanding this and using these modes because they can to me that it's it's it can really branch out into a lot of different areas of music. So and especially your understanding of how other aspects of theory work. So hang in there. This is difficult, but I know this can be learned. Anybody can understand this stuff. So just have some patience with it, work through it, practice it, ask me some questions. I'm happy to kind of work with any sort of confusion that you may have. So let's see, anything else? I think that's it. All the information is down below. So check that out and let's get started. I think you're going to enjoy it. Here we go. All right, so quick little review on the major scale. So as you can see, we have the C major scale laid out and we have a couple of things that are happening. One of which, if you remember from the previous one, previous video, that we have our scale degrees. C is the, C is the first note of the scale, D is the second, and so forth. That's kind of representing these red notes up here, okay? The blue notes are just kind of the re filling out the chord. So basically we have a note and then we can kind of create a chord by stacking notes on top of that. Um, these are different types of thirds if you remember that from the previous tutorial. And so uh, all this is gonna apply to these modes because each one of these modes has its unique combination. So one thing I want to also point out too is the spacing between these notes uh, because the major scale has a unique combination or what I refer to as like their, its own DNA, its own makeup, all right? These modes that we're going to be looking at also have their own makeup, own spacing. So for instance, if, again, to review the major scale, we have a whole step, whole step, this is a half step, this is a whole step, whole step, whole step, and then finally a half step from B to C. So let's quickly look at what that looks like again on one string of the guitar. Now this same scale can be played in a lot of different ways. So for instance, if I'm going kind of across the guitar like this, here's what the same notes, oops, what's the same notes look like there. Now, again, I like to see it kind of on one string because it just visually makes more sense because this E right here is the same as this E over here. And it just visually, you can see the distance better between D to E versus this D to this E over here, okay? So that's kind of why I'm working with uh, um, the scale like this. All right, so here's our major scale. You can see again, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now, let's go back to our music here. Um, now, we also have this down here, which is the harmony, the chord harmony written in Roman numerals, okay? I'm using large case Roman numerals. You may see sometimes them written in lower case like this to represent minor. Um, this is just the way I was kind of taught to do it large case like that. It's not a, it's not a big deal as long as you're just kind of aware of these, of these different kinds of ways of writing it. Um, and these Roman numerals we're going to use them for also for the other modes too because they have different different chord qualities. Now, let's talk a little bit again about 
um, this kind of these scale degrees, okay? The reason why I kind of want to drive this in is because the major scale is going to be the, it's, it's the best scale to know because everything is related to it. When we're looking at these, when we take a look at some of these modes, we're going to be looking at a couple different major scales, and one is a comparison. Also, one is where the notes are, der are derived from. So, the better you you have that understanding of the major scale, the better these concepts are going to be um, uh, are going to sink in. So, again, the this numbering of the scale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For a major scale, that is set in stone. You you always have to use that those numbers. So anytime someone says five, six, seven, whatever it is, it's referring to a major scale. Because here's here's what happens is if someone says, "Hey Chris, play me the flat three. Well, what does that mean? Flat three. It's always it's always derived off a of major scale, meaning we take we go to the third scale degree and then we flat it. So what that would look like in this context would be I go to the E and then I would flat that down. Technically that should read E flat, but the software program unfortunately doesn't um, always make that correction. D sharp and E flat are the same notes, so just uh, keep that in mind. So this is technically the flat three. It's the third note in line, but we need more information Meaning we can't just call it three because if I say play the third, someone's most people are going to play the E. So if it's technically that's the note we want to play, this D sharp or E flat, then we have to make sure that we're clear in our documentation and also our communication that that is our flat three. Here's another example here. Uh, let's say if I were to lower this B down to a B flat. So this is actually a type of mode, and we're going to see this in a bit, but this one here it is the seventh note in this in this chain but we can't again we can't call it seven because b has been designated as seven so we still use that it's a seventh note we just have to make sure that we correctly label it as flat seven okay here's another one if i raise this f to that f sharp that would be one two three four it'd be the sharp four in this scale right here okay so this concept is important because we're going to see this in every single one of these modes that we take a look at. All right, so let's dive into the very first mode. So what's happening is we're going to take the C major scale, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of offset these things, meaning now we're going to rewrite the C major scale, but we're now we're going to start on D. Now, actually, before I do that, I do want to make sure that People are clear on uh, what would what makes really this the key of C, okay? And kind of um, what drives this into our ear is a lot to do with a how the melody is played, b and also how the chords are arranged. All right. So for instance, if I really want to play a song in the key of C, I got to make sure that my home bass is. Uh, clearly identified and what I mean by that is this first chord here C all right that's kind of, that's my home base in any mode any key whatever it is that first chord construction in the series is our home base so this uh, like I said C is our home base so I need to make sure all my chords help emphasize that that is our home base or what they call a tonic chord um, or key center, okay? So an example, let's see, what would be a good example? If I play a simple chord progression like C, F, G. It just sounds like it wants to rest on that, or end on that C chord. That's another way to kind of think about what our key center is. What, what chord could we kind of end on? Um, so let's see. I can also do, doesn't matter, I can use, literally use all the chords within that key and, uh, and still be uh, technically in that key of C. For instance, I use C, say D minor, A minor, F, C. I can use all the, all the minor chords that are available to me, any major chords, as long as I'm careful with that construction and making sure that those chords are kind of pointing back um, to that C chord, then I'm going to be playing in that key of C. 
All right, so as we go through these, it's, it's going to make a little bit more sense of what I'm talking about. All right, so let's take a look at, now let's take a look at our first mode here, okay? Our first mode line is going to be D Dorian, okay? So what we've done, as you can probably see here, is that we've written the C major scale, except now we're starting on the next note, which in this case is D. So this is a D minor chord. Okay. It's the, because it's the same notes as the key of C, it's going to be the same chord construction. You're going to see all this, uh, all the familiar chords here. But because everything now is offset, we do have some, uh, some, some changes going on. Now, what we have to do here we have to kind of look at this, or at least this is the way I look at it, is I'm looking at this scale in comparison to two different types of major scales. The first major scale that I kind of want to look at is its parallel major scale, in this case is D major. Okay, so here is here are the chords in D major. It would be D major, E minor, F sharp minor, because that would be the whole step between those two. And then G, A, B minor, C sharp, diminished, back to D. So that would give us the one chord, two minor chord, and so forth. I'm not going to write the whole thing. I think you get the idea on that. So we're comparing this new kind of key slash scale here. Uh, and we can see some differences going on. For instance, the first chord is different because it's gone from D major to D minor. Again, we're always relating this stuff back to a major scale and asking the question, how is it different from that major scale? The second chord is no difference. The next chord here, there is a difference. There's two things that are going on. Not only has it gone from a minor chord to a major chord, but we've actually lowered this by one fret. So let's take a look at what this would look like on a scale form here. So I'm going to do it here because it'll um, it'll fit within this whole window here. So here's what a D major scale looks like. Okay. Now what we have in this Dorian scale, we have an F and we have a C. So there are two variations that are two alterations, I should say. That we've um, that we've changed. Okay, so we've gone from F sharp to F, and C sharp to C. So this is one, two, three, flat three. Okay, for the F. And this is what's kind of tricky, is because the note F, there's no flat attached to it. It's not F flat or nothing, and that's what's kind of confusing. Is people say, well, why is the F considered the flat three? It's not. It's not F flat or anything. But it is when we're, again, when we're comparing it to a D major scale, which is normally F sharp is the third. Again, it's just a relationship to where this D is here, and meaning distance wise. Um, and we've lowered that down by one fret. That's one of the hardest things for people to get their head around. Same thing with this C right here. Why would this can be considered the flat seven? It's not C flat. So it's not necessarily a flatted note. It is in context of a D major scale. Again, we've lowered that C sharp down to a C, okay? Because again, that numbering system of a major scale is set in stone of one, two, five, five, six, seven. And now we've altered those two different locations. So you can see that here. Here's our flat three, and here's our flat seven, okay? So let's take a look at the chords again. So like I said, the third chord has gone from F sharp minor down to F major. So that chord, we call that, when I hear that F major chord in this key, my ears hear this as the flat three major chord. The F note is the flat third away from D. Four chord, no change. Five chord, it's gone from major to minor. Six chord has gone from minor to diminished. Seventh chord has gone from diminished to a flat seven major chord. Finally, uh, we back to where we started. We've gone from D to D minor. Now, I know I said before there's two major scales we compare this um, this from. 
this is being one of them, D major, okay? I call that the parallel major scale. The other major scale I, I like to think of is where these notes came from. And as you know, that came from the key of C, all right? So this scale, let me just write this in here. And uh, B diminished, C. So here's the other major scale we're looking at. Again, this Dorian, we got all this Dorian information from this scale here, all right? So once we have this new scale, what we have to do is now compare it to its parallel major scale. And that's why we bring in this scale here, because we want to see, again, what the differences are. Now, once you get this concept, the rest are, are going to flow really nicely because you're going to see this process start to, start to really um, take an effect. So that's the main thing I really want to kind of drive in here, okay? Because what's kind of cool is like, if you know what mode it is, let's say, let, let's say you know you're playing in D minor, Dorian. Well, if you've already practiced your C major scale, mm -hmm. up and down, it's the same note. So it's not, it's not like you're having to relearn patterns, okay? You have to kind of relearn a little bit how you emphasize those notes because now those notes can, can take on a whole different form, in this case, Dorian sound versus a major sound. So how do you do that? Again, it comes down to emphasizing this tonic or our home bass. So if I were to construct a song using D Dorian, I want to make sure my one chord, in this case D minor, is strongly uh, emphasized. I want to saturate the listener's ear with that D minor chord, and I want to carefully use the other chords that help point back to that chord. So how would you do that? Well, one simple way is to just start on the tonic chord, the one minor in this case. And then, let's say, maybe I'll go to... Going, so I went from D minor to G, but the fact that D minor was the first chord, that's going to have a lot of weight to it. Chords, depending on what measure they're on, can have uh, a, a certain amount of weight to it. So the first chord of uh, generally has a lot of strength to it, as well as the last chord in a phrase. A phrase could last anywhere from two measures, four measures, whatever, it can actually be a lot of different things, but in general music, most popular music, it's gonna be two measures or four measure phrases, sometimes eight measure phrases. So the last chord in, let's say, a four measure phrase is gonna have a lot of influence on the key center, okay? So again, so I like to really, what for me, what I like to do is I really like to establish the key center by emphasizing that one chord as much as I can. So I'll go, like, like I said, I'll go from D minor to G, back to D minor. Maybe I'll go to A minor, but then back to D minor. Again, always giving the listener a clear indication of where one is, okay? If you can do that, then you've established this key of D Dorian. If you don't, then it's going to be, it's going to start to kind of gravitate towards back to C major because, as you know, it's all the same chords, all the same notes and it can easily start sounding like C major, all right? But the good thing on the guitar is, like I said, we don't necessarily have to rework our patterns if, if we already know the major scale patterns. We're not really reworking what the patterns are um, they're, they're the, because they're the same notes. Again, it's just a matter of our emphasis. Now, if I were to use a scale to make it sound more like D, D minor, Dor, D Dorian, I would do the same thing that I would do with chords, meaning I would emphasize, instead of the chord D minor, I emphasize the tonic note, which in this case is D. As you can hear, I'm kind of always going back to that D to ground the ear. It's You have to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more careful when you're playing a melody without the chords, because the chords are really gonna drive in what key center is. Without the chords, it's gonna be, that scale pattern could sound like C major. 
So you have to really make sure you're really emphasizing where the where the first note of the scale is. In this case, it's D. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's see. Let's go. Let's go on to the next mode. We're gonna go. That was majority of the of the um, information as far as the modes go. Now we're just gonna play out. We're gonna do the math for the remaining sets of modes here. So, for instance, oops, let me get rid of D here. Here is the next one. This is E Phrygian. All right. So again, we what what we want to do is we want to take this new key scale um, and compare it to the two major scales. We have to compare it to its parallel major scale. In this case, it's gonna be E major, as well as um, where this came from. Where it came from is always gonna be the same for all these. It's always gonna come from C, all right? But we, so what we're gonna do now is just compare it with its parallel major scale. So an E major scale looks like this. E, F sharp, it's got a lot of sharps to it, G sharp, a, B, C sharp, D sharp, back to E. So you can already see what's happening here. So this scale up here is just E, F, G, A, because it's all from C, right? B, C, D, E. So you can see there's some changes that are happening here, here, here and here. So we have, so we'll make now go and take a look at the corrections here. You can see that the second note has gone from F sharp to F. So we have to call that a flat two. Again, F is two. F, sorry, F sharp is two. F is flat two. G sharp is three. G is the flat third away from this note here. Okay. So let's quickly look at this on. This chart here, right here. Let's see, where can we do it? We'll do we'll do this E right here. So here again is an E major scale. So what we've done is we've lowered the second one, we've lowered the third one, we've lowered the sixth one, and we've lowered the seventh one. See how those now are same notes as the key of C, just in a different order. So this has its own unique spacing, half step whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. That's another way to kind of think of these is that each one of these has its own unique spacing. I like to really think of them in these terms here. One, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. That is the formula for a Phrygian scale. So you can create a Phrygian scale anywhere in any key as long as you know what the major scale is because it's just an alteration from the major scale, right? So if I'm in, let's say again, D major, that's my D, sorry, G major scale, all I have to do is make those corrections. So I make the flat three, sorry, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. So now I have my Phrygian. Here's G major. So that's a really good exercise, and I would recommend you do that to all of the modes, which is play the major scale. So in this case, I'm using G as my example. And then play the mode. It's Phrygian. One, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. And then play the major again. Maybe not that fast, but you want to hear the difference of the, the, the two scales, okay? Now same, just like all the other keys here, if we want to play in this E Phrygian mode, we need to emphasize this tonic chord here. A lot of people say this kind of has a Spanish kind of flavor to it, which, yeah, it kind of does. emphasizing that E, and that will make this scale. Another thing that I do sometimes is what you probably saw me do there, which is 
I hit an open string and then I'll play the scale to get an idea how each one of those notes um, uh, reacts to that one note being held. So if I'm on E and I'm kind of working away or working up and down the scale, I can hear that comparison. So here's the major. Now here is now here's the frigid. So again, there's two major scales we're comparing, E major, which is its parallel major scale, and where it came from, which is C. Simple, right? So what makes this key unique is that flat two. You're gonna see in a bit, other minor keys have a flat three and a flat six and a flat seven. What really makes Phrygian kind of unique is this flat two uh, scale degree, as well as the flat two major chord, in this case, F. Because normally in the key of E major, it would be F sharp minor is the two chord. But in here, they're playing flat two. So hopefully you get that idea, okay? So you can play around with This is what's great. It's like if once you've learned C, you can now take the same information and start to manipulate and start to create all these different keys with just that bit of information. That's what's really great about these modes. So this is... Just so you know, that would be, oops. This is minor. Major, major, minor, diminish, major, minor. Those would be the keys in E Phrygian. All right, let's go on to the next one. We're gonna kind of keep moving fast through some of these. Okay, so let's take a look at this F Lydian uh, mode here. As you, if you take a look at it, it's almost identical to a major F major scale. So let's take a look at what it looks like on the um, chart here. So here is the scale, but here is an F major scale. So here we have the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay. So what we've done is, as we know, we're getting these notes from C major, and C major does no B flat. So we kind of we're moving that one, two, three, fourth scale degree up one fret. So that is why we get a sharp four scale degree uh, right here. That's what's really unique about it. Uh, the regular F major scale has almost similar notes and chords and whatnot with a slight kind of variation to the four and a couple other spots here. And the two is normally minor, but here we have a two major chord. Uh, seven is normally diminished. Here we have a seven minor chord. But there are some co a lot of commonalities, like one and five chord are, are both major, which is happens in both Lydian, as we see here, as well as F major. All right, so let's keep going. We're gonna go through all these modes. So that's what's kind of unique about this Lydian mode. Uh, let me get rid of that. Let's go on to Mixolydian. A lot of funky names in here. So here we have this. Is, so this first chord here it would be G. So this is G Mixolydian. So here's our G, A minor. These are the chords in this key. The third chord is diminished. The fourth chord is major. So we have C major. The fifth chord is minor. The five chord that is. Um, sixth chord is going to be minor, and we have a flat seven, which is F, back to G. So here's a G major, just as a comparison. G major looks is almost identical. Again, except a, sl a few variations. So you can see the third chord is slightly different. The fifth chord has gone from major to minor, and the seventh chord here has gone from F sharp diminished to F major. So that's why we get a flat seven here. You know, these are the corrections right here. So that's the kind of the unique characteristic of G Mixolydian. 
All right, so let's dive into the A Aeolian mode. This is one of the most common modes, minor modes that is uh, used in music. And so let's take a look at what's kind of happening here. There are several names for this one, and I'm not sure exactly why uh, there's so many, but uh, let me show you what they are. First of all, they a lot of times call this the natural minor. Oh man, come on, Chris. <laughs> it's hard to write with this tablet. The natural minor, the relative minor, and of course, the Aeolian minor mode. All right, the reason why the relative term is used a lot because uh, it's, it, it's, since it's so common, they, they kind of say it's the relative minor mode or relative minor mode to a major key. So it's relative to C. So the relative minor, in this case, natural minor or Aeolian, they're all the same, is always built off the sixth scale degree of any major scale. So for instance, if we look at the, let's go back to F major scale here, one, two, three, four, five, six. D would be the relative minor mode off of F, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so if you hear people use these terms, don't get confused because they're exactly the same scale. All right, so what makes this one kind of unique? Well, let's re real quick write out A major, okay? So A major looks something like this. Here are the chords, A we go up a whole step, right? We have our minor chord there. We go up another whole step, we have another minor chord. Another A half step, we have our D major. A whole step, we have E major. Um, we go up a whole step, we have F sharp minor. Another whole step, we have G sharp diminished back to A, all right? So in A minor, Aeolian, Here's the difference. We have a flat, the second chord is diminished. This one, third chord is a flat three major chord. We've gone from C sharp minor to C. Here we have a D minor. We Here we have an E minor. Here we have a flat two major, sorry, flat six, been a long day. Flat six major chord and then finally finishing up with a flat seven major chord, okay? So this key, like I said, is it's so commonly used that there's gonna be a lot of songs that, that you, you will recognize using this particular key. Um, just to name a few, I know like, uh, let's say Dream On by Aerosmith, they use Aeolian. Uh, there's parts of Stairway to Heaven that use this mode. Um, just to, I mean, just there's hundreds and hundreds of songs that use the Aeolian mode um, as their base, as their key center. So let's see. Um, so that's kind of the makeup of this one here. So let's actually let's jump over here. Let's create an Aeolian mode using from this F. Okay. If you remember, we have a flat three. So again, we always kind of start from that major scale and make the corrections. We have a flat six and a flat seven. So that's what it looks like from F that is, okay? So let's do that, let's go and actually do it on A. So here's A, here's our A major scale. I know we've kind of already done this, but we're gonna drive it in. So here we go, so flat three, right? Flat six and a flat seven. So I make those alterations, you can see that we've gotten rid of the sharps and we're back to this Aeolian mode there. All right, so final mode here, which is probably the least used out of the bunch, which is B Locrian. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because it's just not used that much, uh, but it's still you wanna know the general makeup of this particular mode. So let's take a look at it. It's got a lot of alterations here. We have a flat two, flat three, flat five, a flat six, and a flat seven. So the first chord is diminished. So that would be B diminished, C 
D minor is the flat three minor chord. E minor is the four minor chord. Flat five, which is going to be F major. Flat six is G major. A minor is the flat seven minor back to B diminished, okay? And to be honest with you, this, key, this mode is so frequently used, I can't even think of a single song that uses this mode, all right? Um, all right, so here's B major. Let's just kind of, as a comparison, do this real quick. Let's do the math. The second chord is minor, right? We gotta go up another whole step. We have D sharp minor. We have E major. F sharp major, G sharp minor, A sharp diminished back to B. So that's B major scale, okay? You can see the kind of the difference between these two different scales and keys. All right, so let's see. Now, now that we've gone through the modes, let me give you a couple little ways to practice these, okay? So what I would do is start to get comfortable with the C major scale, because the nice thing again is the, is the pattern doesn't change, okay? So if we're playing A, A Aeolian, F Lydian, doesn't matter. It's the same notes as the C major scale, so I can use all those same patterns. So what I would recommend you do is learn C major, learn all the different positions of C major, and then jump on YouTube and you'll find um, different backing tracks that are in these different modes. For instance, look for something that relates to these, meaning G mixolydian. You don't want to use F mixolydian because that's a different major scale, right? Uh, so we want to keep it simple. Start in, start in using C major scale and the modes off a of C major scale. So if you want to play a mixolydian from that C major scale patterns that you learn, it has to be G mixolydian. If you want Lydian, it has to be F Lydian. If you want Dorian, it has to be D Dorian and so forth, okay? So look for backing tracks with that, um, with that search term, okay? So the other thing that you can do is you can literally just strike a chord, any one of the chords in, that, in, in the key of C major. So let's say if I play an F chord, and I, let's say I just record that F chord for, maybe I put it on my looper, and just that one chord, and then I'll play that C major scale mm -hmm. over that F. And you'll see how that, those notes start to take on a Lydian sound because of that F is, being, is saturating your ear and you're playing that, those particular notes. If it sounded like F major, it's because you're flatting that B flat, if you remember that, right? So we said earlier, like you can play, you can, you can compare the scales, meaning let's say F major scale to F, let's say Lydian. things like that. So I like the backing tracks, but it's also good to do some of these other kind of exercises. So another thing you can do, like I have like I did earlier, which is holding a note. If you don't have a looper or you don't want to record yourself, use an open string and play whatever scale it is that your mode that you're trying to, put, to work on. Because you need some sort of kind of grounding note or chord to, to, to compare those pitches of the scale. That way it'll really drive in what those sounds are. And I like, I like this concept of thinking about them in these, in these um, uh, like flat two, flat three terms because if your brain is so in tuned to a major scale and there's somebody plays something that is, um, uh, that is outside of that, you'll be able to kind of pick out where that's happening, meaning I hear a flat three or I hear a flat six. And the reason why I hear a flat six is because I know what a six sounds like. And then that sixth degree, I can tell that has been lowered. And the chords work the same way. So when you start learning, start figuring out songs by ear, you start to hear songs in these Roman numeral terms, regardless of what mode they are. You'll hear a flat three major chord in a particular mode, from a particular mode, or a flat six major chord, whatever the case may be you want to get comfortable with this type of association because it's concrete. It's very concrete of what we're hearing in terms of um, kind of, I guess you can think of it as math. We're mathematically putting some equations to the sound in a sense. Well, I'm going to continue on with another lesson that's even going to dive into more detail with these modes. 
and allow you to even get more use out of these concepts. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see everyone in the next video.